Mrs. Hollowell, come quick. Allie is stuck in a tree. A group of students ran up to me, not with concern, but with giggles. You see, they were exploring a story plot using nature to drive their writing process. After years of taking students outside to learn, I have come to realize that nature-based education offers great cognitive, physical, and social-emotional growth. As I learn more about nature-based education through coursework and professional development, my practice becomes more intentional. I weave nature into my lessons, incorporate new vocabulary into outdoor play, and encourage students to try a new idea, take a risk, and show leadership among their peers as they spend time together outside. Students care more about their environment with nature-based education. My class frequently visits the riverfront classroom at our school, and they have formed a desire to take care of it. So, my fourth graders wrote an act to protect riparian areas to learn the path a bill takes to become a law. They were thrilled when they received meaningful feedback from their Maine State Senator and the Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Court. After reading David Sobel's Childhood and Nature, I encouraged my class to start their own community in our outdoor space. Riley set up a blacksmith shop, and soon all of the students working with him had new vocabulary. Anvil, forge, iron. Students learn more about weathering firsthand on the playground. They can point out root wedging along the buckled sidewalk underneath the oak tree. Then. They measure the circumference of that tree to determine its age. Access to nature-themed fiction and non-fiction assures that students can still enjoy nature even on the coldest and darkest of days. They put themselves in Brian Robeson's <coughs> shoes as he survives the wilderness in Gary Paulson's hatchet, and they connect their environmental activism to that of Catherine Applegate's young title character, Willow Dean. Beyond fictional reading, my students can research renewable energy resources as they prepare a presentation for their class. Children engaging in nature-based learning also enjoy a wide variety of physical benefits that complement cognitive development. The students in my outdoor space love to climb trees as high as my predetermined boundaries allow. <laughs> they love to stretch their arms and legs as they go around the branches, building muscles that lead to greater core strength and attention in the classroom. Students learn how to assess and negotiate risk when they work in nature. When my students build a bridge across a drainage ditch, they are constantly checking the water level against the height of their boots. Inevitably, I have a few kids who lose the water versus boot challenge, and they dump out their boots gleefully, wringing out their socks as though they were badges of honor. While it may seem counterintuitive to take a child who struggles to stay upright in their chair outside to climb trees and leap through puddles, these activities provide an opportunity for sensory integration that pay huge dividends in the classroom. How about that kid of yours who can't attend to a task more than 30 seconds? Or the one that has their hands all over everybody in the classroom? Take them outside to learn. Braxton just started at our school last year. His parents came to me, warning me about his ADHD diagnosis, worried he wouldn't be able to make and keep friends when he struggled to keep his body regulated. Challenge accepted. From the first day of school, Braxton was outside learning with nature. He joined our after-school ecology club, and he looked forward to the class's monthly hikes. His parents came to our first conference happily confused. This boy they adored, the one in perpetual trouble, was thriving at school. He had friends, he was involved in all things nature. He surely had a few behavioral blips, but he was finally successful, both academically and socially. Another great gift of nature-based education is social-emotional growth. When our students leave their public education experience, of course, we want them to be accomplished readers, writers, mathematicians, and scientists. But if their sense of empathy is underdeveloped, and they have no strategies to find their calm, 
life is going to be more challenging than necessary. A visit to Kingfield Elementary School taught me the practice of starting each day outside. So now every day, regardless of temperature, we begin with a meeting in our garden. Students can share their feelings, and I get a pulse for how everyone's days are beginning. Henry is a student in our class who has some intellectual differences. Students eagerly invite Henry to stand next to them. They communicate their emotions using sign language, and Henry proudly shares the chives he's picked with his classmates. Without explicitly needing to teach a lesson, these students have learned the power of inclusion as they share time together outside. Let's head back to the Riverfront classroom as I introduce you to two powerful humans. These girls are forces to be reckoned with. They love to bicker and argue in the classroom, and I often have to step in and help with their friendship issues. But they share this powerful love for nature. And so they will go down to our riverfront classroom and they will build a giant pile of leaves. And then they share the responsibility of overseeing those who jump into it. My friendly but introverted student who struggles with math and writing morphs into an ape king, leaping and drum jumping through the space as he leads his followers from their training ground to their lair. Nature-based education offers this child a chance to practice leadership with his peers. A workshop in forest bathing encouraged me to try sit spots with my students. And so now these children who struggle to find their calm have an opportunity to be still with nature. And this can carry them well into adulthood. You don't need a river for nature-based learning. Try offering a sit spot outside to your class. Pair up with another teacher for nature buddies. Get involved with your local conservancy and take your students to a trail. Hook up with a garden club and start a raised bed garden. Community members can support your work by helping create an outdoor space or chaperoning field trips. Businesses can lend a hand by donating materials and sharing their expertise. As you become more comfortable taking your students outside, intentionality and in designing lessons will follow. My greatest hope for you all is that you have the opportunity to watch children shine as they engage in the joy of nature-based learning. Thank you.